Greg, Acupuncture Queenstown. This is a 20 minutes to 30 minutes deep stretch. You take your time, take it real easy, I'll explain things as we go along. I suggest you wear warm, comfy clothing, turn the lights down, the lights up so you can see me, but otherwise keep it down, keep it mellow. Try this just before you go to sleep and it should take the stress of your day away and keep your mobile and your sleep better. If you haven't got one of these handouts, you can send me a message at acupuncturequeenstown.com and I can send you one. Think of my regular class and hand this out. Each time, it's just a basic loosen up most things. We'll do some more in-depth classes uh, over the next few weeks. So my favourite to start is to clasp the hands behind. You might lose my head here. Here still. I stretch the hands back and down and then fold over. It's a sense this is a shoulder stretch. We also get a bit of a hamstring stretch. So if your legs are a little tight, then bend your knees slightly. I will shake my head around. Do like one of those nodding dogs in the back of the car. Most of us have huge neck tension, the necks are compressed and stressed all day, so this chant here allows it to relax the way the head will stretch the neck. As my legs feel like they're loosening, I would tend to straighten them. And the plan is to ease in. I'm not going to go for maximum stretch to start with. We're not looking to force anything. What we're looking to do is wait for the body to release. And then we follow that release of the muscles and of the tissue. Notice here my legs are straightening. What I also like here is I take a deep breath in and I hold the breath. And then if I squeeze the arms over, sometimes there'll be a slight click with the joints in my upper back, looking the shoulder blades loosen. Don't tell the osteopaths or the chiropractors. I'm not sure it's, they like it, but it feels nice. From here, just drop the hands down, slide the hands down the back of the legs, and then bend the knees to come to the mat. I'm going to take a double leg stretch here for the quads, for the thighs. We'll do this one at a time, and when we do our more specific videos, we'll focus more on the lower leg and we'll just do one at a time. There's two ways to do this one. One is with the heels under the bum. So as you lean back, that stretch on the quads. And if you're more flexible, you can come down to your elbows. <clears throat> if you're even more flexible than that, you can lie down completely flat. Notice how my knees come up. As I push them down, there's more of an arch in the back. Some backs will like this, some backs won't. What I prefer to do here is to bring my heels out just a little bit, not a lot. I'm not trying to sit right between my feet, as that tends to put too much pressure on the knees, especially when you're old, like me. I just wriggle between my heels, and then as I lean back, it's more comfortable. When I lie flat, notice that the back is not arching in the same way. I get a deeper stretch on the quads. But you can experiment to see what suits you. I tend to stretch the arms up here. Breath is very slow, deep. We're looking to release. We're not pushing, we're not forcing.
coming out of this is a little tricky. <clears throat> First thing is lift the knees up, pop the hands under the shins, and you lift yourself up. Once you can get one elbow up, come up onto the hand, and you lift. It's much easier on the one-legged version, which we will do, as I say, in a, in a follow-up video. From here, I'll always come forward into child's pose. And we've done a back bend, I'll then take a mild forward bend. Knees wide in child's pose. It allows your belly and your ribs to hang between so they sink down towards the floor, otherwise you're kind of squashing up your stomach. And I always add a little side stretch here. So you walk the hand across just like little wriggly fingers walk across until I feel the stretch in the side of my waist or my ribs. You need to put this hand on top. And then the big breath here will give a bigger stretch. I quite like putting my hand here. This allows me to adjust my ribs and the rotation of my back. In all these positions, what you're looking to do is find the stretch, find the pose that works for you. Come back to the other side, walk the hands across. This side's tighter for me. Back to the center, come up. And we'll move and stretch our hips. This is a cross legged forward bend, it's not a classical cross legged bring your ankles in close. The legs are much further forward, so you bring the legs forward and you walk them across, just heel turn them across, and you're looking to have about a 90 degree bend in the front leg. And we pull the toes up here. So this ankle is underneath this knee, and this one here, the left ankle, is just in front of the right knee. Notice I'm mirror teach, pretend I'm in mirror. Okay, so this is my left leg, this is my right leg. So we're here. Now I'm just going to bend forward, I'm going to drop the knees down, I'm going to bend forward. Now, some schools will tell you you need to keep your back straight and push your chest forward, which is anatomically correct to stretch the hip. But over night time, it's too much. Too much detail, I prefer to relax forward here, just allow the weight to drop. Note again, I'm not forcing. Now I have a, an old injury in this hip. In fact, I'm full of injury. So in some positions, I can go a long way, some positions I can't. What I'm doing is I'm listening. I'm listening to what the body says. And here we're a bit tight, so I'm just gonna wait. And it may or it may not release. Some days will be different to others. So as I feel that let go, then I can walk the hands forward. And some days I might think near. Maybe I won't push that side, or maybe I won't do too much. So I'll swap sides here, bring the legs out, swap around, front leg, 90 degrees. Notice what we're doing here with the toes. I'm pulling the toes up, and I'm pushing the pinky toe side, the outside of the foot, into the mat, or into the floor here. That just engages these muscles on the side of the shin, or side of the lower leg, which helps to support the knee. There's a tendency to kind of freak the knee out. Again, if you pull the feet in too far, over twist the knee and it's not necessary. We're stretching into the hip. Now if you're real tight here and you can't even go that far, just put the hands behind you and just push your chest forward. Okay. The other option for those who are tighter in the hip and find it uncomfortable is lying on your back. You cross one ankle over the other knee, you reach through and either grab the front of the knee or behind the knee. Whichever you feel more comfy, head down and draw the leg towards you. Okay. 
We've got a very similar stretch for the hip. It's a little bit less intense. I prefer the seated version if you can. I just think it uh, gets in a little better. Notice how in all of these poses you'll see me wriggle. What I'm doing is I'm just adjusting as things loosen, trying to find the comfy spot. So you need to find your pose. Okay. There's tendency to think there's a perfect pose. Nonsense. Is the Instagram full of perfect poses? Nonsense. It's what feels right to you. That's the perfect pose. Here is we'll come up. We'll come up easy. Walk up. Okay, pop the legs out straight. Check they feel okay. And then we're going to swap into a twist. I'm going to bring this right foot in here. I'm going to step the left foot over. Okay, so I'm here. And I'm going to lift the chest up. Place the arm outside the elbow or the arm outside the leg here. But the hand goes behind so we get a twist. So from the side, it looks like this. So we're here. And we're looking to twist, to rotate. Okay. Again, it's not a big rotation. You can reach down, take hold of the leg, do all sorts of funky stuff. But again, this is more of a relax, release the day type situation. I suck the belly in, I rotate, I look over the shoulder. This looks pretty unnecessary. Drop the hand down. Whatever feels like it works. Of course, you can always hold these longer once you get the swing. But when I come back, you always rotate the other way just momentarily. We do that on the other side. I'm going to suck this leg in. It's the left heel comes under the right buttock here. The right foot steps over. Sitting reasonably comfortable here. If you're tighter again in the hips, this bottom leg can straighten. It's much easier to take the twist this way. Okay. So whichever version you prefer. The arm comes over. And goes behind and you turn. Keeping the spine tall. <clears throat> Bring the head back. Bring the body back. Okay, so we've already stretched back of the legs, the hips, we've mobilized the spine. I'm going to take a seated forward bend now. So the seated forward bend, you just lift the chest up and you fold forwards. Now, if you can reach the toes, this is groovy. Okay, if you can't reach the toes, you just hold the ankles or take a strap, put the strap over the feet. Again, Anatomically, you'll get told a lot you need to tilt your hips, get the back straight when you come forward. And again, that's correct. What it does, it tilts the hips, puts a greater stretch on the hamstring. But again, with some mellow stretch. So we're just going to hold on to wherever we can and just fold forward. So we're just folding forward and relaxing. You're holding the ankles, or you're holding the, um, the legs lower down with the strap. Again, you just pull. Ease yourself down. I want gravity to pull us forward. Again, if you're real tight and you're up here with the strap, it's okay, just a bit more pull. On a further video, we'll do the lower body and we'll do some lying stretches for the hamstring. Those are more flexible. What I like to do here is either holding onto the toes, do just one foot. Here's the toes like a ratchet. I just pull, point the toe, and that pulls me forward and enables me to wriggle in to the position better. <coughs> Excuse me. You're really flexible, you can get the wrist onto the toes here, and I like this, it pulls me forward. 
the calf muscle comes across the knee here. So if I pull my toes back, I get a stronger stretch behind the knee. That restricts sometimes where, how far I can fold. So I point the toe, that takes that pressure off. I pull myself forward, I ratchet forward a little. And then I pull the toes back. And I ratchet it forward. I can just ease myself forward into a deeper stretch if appropriate. Come out of this one, you just ease yourself up, just walk yourself up. Check everything's groovy. After each pose, check. Sometimes you go, that didn't like that, in which case you miss it out, or we go much easier next time. From here to the inclined plane, put the hands behind, lift the hips up, press it from the heels, roll the head back, open the chest, shoulder blades together. If that's too strong, we're going to bend the knees, take a tabletop. We come back down from here. We're going for a wide legged forward bend. Now, your legs may go this wide, maybe this wide. We'll see. If you're this wide and you're falling backwards, again, very common, very common to be tight in the inner thigh. You put the hands behind and you just push your chest forwards. Okay, just ease them forward this way. Once you can go beyond that vertical point, if you can bring your legs wider, then you allow gravity to help you. Again, anatomically, we can hold the chest up and do the proper, perfect yoga version. Which there's many schools, by the way. And they all disagree. It's quite funny. Anyway, um, it's like politicians. So, if you can get past that vertical point, I tend to relax here. I want to stretch this. I'm not too worried about keeping myself all upright because I want to relax. So I ease forward here and just settle. We should feel a strong stretch along here. Okay. And keep my feet pointing up to the ceiling. As things loosen again, you can. Use the floor to pull yourself forward a bit. Do more flexible. You can hold the big toes here and just allow a bit more weight to go forward. If you have a block, you can put a block under your head. Again, we'll go into that in the more detailed variations on this. Try to keep this one simple, it's one you can do in a hotel room or in isolation somewhere. You don't have that all the equipment. I'm going to come up out of this one. I'm going to take a side bend. <clears throat> so I'll tip over this way. I'm going to get elbow and knee, head on the hand, and then this left arm comes up and over. What I'm looking for is a side bend. What I want is this stretch through the side of the waist here, between the ribs and the hips. This low back, side waist region. And what I can also do here is I can rotate slightly. I can slightly lift my chest up or drop it down till I find the sweet spot. Okay. All of these things you want a sweet spot. You don't want to be in a position where you're going because then the muscles won't relax. The muscles won't release. If you stress them too hard, they simply resist what you're asking them to do. You're more flexible, you can put the shoulder to the knee, reach out, take hold of the toe here, and maybe hold the foot. You can do all sorts of interesting twisting around positions. But for most of us, just being here somewhere is going to be enough. It's a general rule of thumb. I like to do sort of between five to ten breaths in each position. Slow and deep. Okay. Come over this side again. Elbow on knee, head on the hand, right arm comes up and over. This is usually my tight to side. Can I try 
the shoulder to the knee. Notice it's further from me here. This is just a little bit far. On your head could go anywhere. You have to look down, forward, look up, smile at cameras, whatever you need to do. So what I'm doing is I'm easing in. I want to feel the body settle in to the position. Come out of this one. From here, because this stretch, because the adductors here come over the knee, you can make your knee a little tight. So just pop your hands under your knees, lift the knees up, and then just shuffle the legs in. Legs in front. Again, I take an incline plane here, just to reset after that forward bending. Point the toes, lift the hips up, roll back. I'm going to take a stronger back bend. I'll go this way. This is called a drop down cobra. It's one of my favorite back stretches. That is to release the low back. Now, again, a lot of classical stuff, people say put the fingers forward. Not necessarily a great benefit to that. For this, have the hands out to the side, less pressure on the wrist. This tends to upset wrists, this tends not to. You can also do this in your fist if that's more comfy on your wrists. All we're going to do is keep the elbows straight and we drop the hips down. That's why it's a drop down cobra. And what I'm looking to do here is relax the low back and let it sag. The reason for that is I want to bend the joints of the low back backwards. Most of us spend way too much time hunching and flopped forward over our computers, on our phones, kicked at the moment with the endlessly checking the doom and gloom on Facebook, or we sit in the sofa. So our back spend, spend too much time around it, we lose that curve, and our discs, etc. get upset. Notice how my shoulders here around my ears, this is the really floppy version. I just stretch a little stronger on my stomach. If I pull my shoulder blades down my back, notice how my chest lifts. What I'm looking to do is leave my knees where they are, and drag my chest forward and up. Pull the shoulder blades down. I can lift my chin too. I get a stronger stretch through the stomach. So I can stretch my stomach muscles here. It's again chronically shortened and tight in the front of the hips. The last thing you can do here is to bend up one leg, drop the hip down a bit on that side to so drop that. In this situation, my right hip down on this side, turn my head a little. And I pull, I pull forward and up. Do the other side. So I bend the left leg up, drop that hip down, and I pull away from that knee with a very minor twist, slight twist, but up and back. It's the strongest stretch in front of the hip and the stump. When we come out of this one, go slow. And we sit back into our child's pose. each pose you check you felt okay now the final one is called the thousand pound stretch I call it a thousand pound stretch because I'm English we can actually call this a two thousand dollar stretch the reason is it will save you about two thousand dollars worth of treatment on your neck and shoulders if you do it regularly so you take a roller or a bolster. I have a bolster over here. Okay. Bolsters are softer. The rollers are easy to get hold of. But they're a bit cheaper. You find these in almost all gyms now. Two options here. One is to have your head on the roller. The knees are bent for balance. And the arms are out to the side here. Like a big Mexican cactus. Personally what I tend to do 
as I just wriggle so my head's dropped off the end of the rod. This allows me to stretch the front of the neck and throat, which again shortens a lot with that head down on the phone position. It's a little uncomfortable the back here. Do check whether that feels appropriate for your neck. Then the arms come here. waiting for the elbows to move towards the floor and also a lot of us will be, will be here in this position and over time what happens is the hand rotates back as the muscles of the chest and the shoulders release again it's a release not a force and again we can adjust position I can bring my arms further up Bring them further down, looking for that best stretch on the chest. Be aware here if you get fizziness in your fingers, your thumb, you get pins and needles. That means the nerves in your shoulders are getting irritated, they're not liking it. So you come out, and then we can, over time, things will loosen. The other option here is to straighten the arms out. You can't do this side of the walls in the way, but you can straighten the arm and play with this arc. Again, you're looking for the tight spot, you're searching. Okay, it's a, a journey of like, ooh, what can I find? Ooh, oh, there it is. Uh huh. That's the tight bit. That's where you find the pose, you find the stretch. Come out, you bring the hands onto the abdomen. The best thing to do with the rollers is just roll off. Then, over night time, I would just sit for a moment, take a couple of breaths, or you can just lie back on the floor. Sometimes you fall asleep in the lounge. And then you head to bed. So, Hope that all makes sense. Send me any messages or comments. I'll see if I can answer any questions you have. If you'd like one of the handouts, just email me at uh, go to acupuncturequeenstown.com. There's a message uh, thing to that. Otherwise, uh, happy uh, isolation and things, and I'll see you soon.